Hello, it's me, Craig Mitch, and this is your go-to place for everything involving the Virgin Money London Marathon. This is The Long Run. Yes, welcome back to The Long Run, live from London. And like we said, we'll be coming to you every day from the studio right here. And today we have another special guest, okay? We have a three-time London Marathon winner, the legend, Paula Radcliffe. Paula, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. I can't complain. How does it feel to be in The Long Run studio? Oh, it's good. It's looking great. Yeah. Really, some nice memories around here, so yeah. it's nice looking Got around. your picture there. I what, know. <laughs> do you want to let the viewers know when that was? So that was, uh, I'm not sure the exact date, but it's 2002, April yeah. 2002. Um, and that was my first uh, London Marathon. It's a um, special one for you. Really special. Absolutely loved it from start to finish. Mm. I think I, I really came into the race with kind of... Um, Got nothing to lose just gonna have fun with this respect yeah. the marathon but try some things out as well and if i screw up it's everyone go so it's just your first yeah. one you were just learning um but i actually loved it all the way through turned out to be a woman on a mission <laughs> i In finished i was already planning the next one <laughs> all right so we're gonna uh, crack on with the show but before we do that uh it is that part of the show where we have the poll this is where you guys watching this can get interactive and have your say on Twitter, I know people are watching this on Facebook and YouTube as well, but Twitter is where you can get involved in the poll. And today's poll, are you ready for it? Will Paula's record <laughs> of two hours, 50 minutes and 25 seconds be broken this year? Yes or no? Let us know, vote on Twitter. Do you think the poll will be broken? It's an interesting one. Paula, do you think it will be broken? Uh, do I think or do I hope not? <laughs> Both. Um, I, I, no, I mean, I think it's, it's one of those questions that I'm asked all the time. And genuinely, I think when I set it, I had no idea yeah. that it was going to last as long as it has I mean, done. Ages. But I was aware of the last couple of miles that I, I was going to break it. Mm. And I was really keen that I push it on as much as possible um, so that I really got everything out of myself that day because the marathon's like that. And you're, yeah. you're in shape. You've got to get a lot of things come together on the day to actually come out of it with a world record. So I really wanted to maximise the fact that things had come together yeah. um, and hopefully it would stand for as long as possible. And um, let's face it, I can't put my shoes on and go back out and get it back <laughs> when it yeah. goes. So I think it's gone then, but it's always going to be my personal best of and course. I'm always going to be really proud of it. Even if someone breaks it, I mean, I imagine whether it's, you know, 10 years, 50, this year, 1,000, it will probably get broken oh, one yeah. day, but I mean, it's, it's still history. You've still made it. And if you guys think that it will be broken, like I said, let us know. If you don't think, let us know as well. All right, so it is the night before race day. This is, talk us through it. What, what, what does a runner go through? What's the motions before, before the big day? Well, you've spent a long time getting ready for a marathon. It, that's where it's kind of different to, to other events. It, yeah. it really is kind of at least three months uh, mm. of hard work and probably more than that. Uh, and it's all coming together now and you've, you've done all of the hard work and the kind of few days before are really just making sure that everything feels good. Yeah. You start to imagine little niggles in, in places. You start to, to stress about have you got everything ready for yeah. the day before. And it's good to have things that just take your mind off that, I guess. So people will have already thought about their race plan. They will have already run in the shoes and the kit that they're going to wear on race day. Yeah. And they will by now have laid them out with the numbers pinned onto them, ready for the next day. For the elite athletes, it's about getting your bottles ready and handing those in. Yeah. They're probably in the technical meeting right now, which is really starts <laughs> the butterflies going yeah. again there because they start actually talking through the details of what time they have to be on the bus in the morning, when they get out to the start, um, what time breakfast opens, things like that and then it's really just trying after all of that to get a fairly good night's sleep if you can and make sure that you really eat well as well uh, this last final almost final chance to, to stock up on glycogen in your muscles and then topping it up again in the morning there's a lot of good information there so i hope you guys are paying attention to that <laughs> taking it all down what are the nerves like because um i mean for you i mean you, you did terrific and there'll be a lot of people that are running their first marathon Nerves are a, a normal thing, especially when it's something of this magnitude. I mean, is it a proper nerve-wracking thing? It is. Um, I think the best way to say it is nerves are a good thing. I yeah. remember my dad saying to me, nerves are a good thing because it shows that you care. 
I like and that. it shows it's really important to you. Yeah. And I think when you've put as much work in as everybody has getting ready for the marathon, it is really important to them. Yeah. Um, but you need to control the nerves because too that, much yeah. is going to take that energy away mm. and, and just sap it from you. So it's finding those little things. Some people will be just put their feet up and watch a movie, mm. might be have a bath, might be listen to some music, might be read a book, um, it might be try and sleep. It's just different things where you just recognize, okay, I'm going a bit over that line now. My nerves are a little bit too much. Mm. So I need to find some outlet for them and some distraction basically to kind of put the lid back on them uh, and then once you start warming up race day I think that's you're already using some energy to kind of burn off those extra nerves yeah. um, and you can focus on what you need to do and once the gun goes you're into it you will love it from start to Just finish in the zone good words right there before we crack on do you want to sign your picture yeah. we have Mark sign his <laughs> So I think it's only right that you right. sign yours as well. You have to turn right around because I'm yeah, left-handed okay. as well. Go ahead. Okay. So Paula's signing that right there. While she signs that, I think it's only fair that we get into our first clip. And this is the best bits from the last four days of the running show. Have a look at this. Good luck. I just enjoy the day because it's the best marathon in the world and uh, I've done a lot around the world and you can't beat the London Marathon. Oh. I've done it! I've done it! It's good every year. I think this is my 12th one now and it's, well you know, it's always great to come and see everyone a bit nervous, people turning up so enthusiastic they're wearing their kit like four days before oh, the race. I love it. We are standing outside the Virgin Money Giving Challenge Zone where you've got the opportunity to take on some challenges and get £5 donated to your chosen charity. Let's go take a look. And we just want to get them to the start line with a smile on their face, you know, yeah. because these people are about to embark on something truly incredible. A lot of them aren't athletes. A lot of them are doing it for very personal reasons. The amount of personal stories I've heard this week, you know, it's, it's just truly inspirational. There's so much going on. It is so busy here. We've all got we've got all these stands available. They're going to run across, get to the end. They're actually sprinting. They're going to finish the marathon in about an hour at that rate. And then this is where they go over to the screens at the end where you can find out your pace and what your predicted time is going to be. I had to defer from last year, so I'm uh, yeah excited to uh, hopefully uh, you yeah, know to uh, turn up on Sunday and do you know and just enjoy the atmosphere. Day. It is so exciting here and we cannot wait to see you tomorrow. It is time. The clock is ticking. Well done to all of you. So there you have it. The best bits from the last four days at the running show. We had the amazing Esme down there speaking to the people, giving their messages. And um, yeah, it's just exciting times really all round. Um, Paul, I want to come back to you. So what's so special about the London Marathon in comparison maybe to all the other marathons? Oh, I think it's, it's, it, is, it is about the spirit of London and it's yeah. about um, the spirit and the history of the marathon and the unique way that it not only brings together all the runners but all, all the people in London out on the route, whether you're just standing at one point or whether you're trying to get different points along the route or whether you're actually in the race itself. Yeah. It's, it's a real celebration and it's, it's, it's a fixture on the, the London calendar mm. um, that not many people want to miss. Everybody knows roughly when it is. Uh, and yeah. if you're in London, you're going to be out there some way tomorrow, either taking part or, or watching and supporting. And that's why I think it's great when it's great weather. But even if it's not great weather, there are still a lot of people out there. And yeah. when you take part in, in your first one, you really understand kind of what it is. Mm. It's the buzz about it that kind of takes over the city and really builds to a crescendo on Sunday that, that's really, really special. Um, and then for my last marathon, I was lucky enough to go off the championship start in 20, 2015 yeah. um, and kind of see it from really inside the race because the elite women go off a little bit ahead. Yeah. So you, you do see, you do get the atmosphere and it's amazing, but you don't live it as much as you do actually as I did in the championship start. So that was really special that I got the opportunity to do that and to experience what's really special okay, about the London Marathon. I can imagine that's very special. I want to ask you as well, the winners of last year's Berlin, New York, Chicago and London Marathon are all running, all right? Is this the best field ever in your opinion? 
Uh, I think it's definitely one of the best fields. It's hard to say that because every year we say it's like the best field ever yeah. and then it comes back again the next year uh, and tops it a little bit. Um, but I think everything is stacked up in both races, men's and women's, for some really, really great racing. And that's, mm. that's kind of what we want to see. We want to see maximum turnout, of course, billions raised for charity, um, but also some great racing and a celebration of marathon running. Yeah, and I, you know, when I was young, I wasn't into running that much, but I would always you know, go on television, you'd see it. I'd always have that appreciation, but I just feel like it's just getting more and more popular now. You just see more and more people. I don't know if it's because people are just getting more healthier in terms of diet and just lifestyle. We're learning so much about, you know, how important it is to be healthy, but do you feel like it's getting more popular as well? Um, well, I mean, I'm biased because it's always been the best sport for me and yeah. it always will be, um, but I do think it's one of the most accessible sports. Yes. Um, and I think that's what's great. And there's a camaraderie to it mm. that, I don't think you experience in any other sport. It's mm. unique, really. There's no other sport where 40,000 people can stand on that start line and they're going to run the same race. They're going to largely experience the, the same atmosphere. They're going to go through the same ups and downs within that race. Yeah. And they're going to look at the people around them uh, and they're going to draw strength from them and support from them. Mm. And every single person gets to the finish line of that marathon a stronger and a better person than the one that started. And that's what's, what's really so special and so unique about it. Mm. And all you really need is a plan and a pair of shoes and a bit of motivation to, to get out there and do the training that's all you need to get into to marathon running into running so I think that's why it's so easy to do yeah. and, and it's that bug uh, and the buzz that you get when you actually go and take part in these big events yeah and it's, it's really inclusive as well you just see people from all walks of life you know mm. all kinds of you know people doing it for charities they've got their own kind of motivations and intentions for doing it but it's just so inclusive yeah it's a brilliant, brilliant thing. We just spoke about the women's field as well, all these you know, amazing runners coming together. Do you think any of them might break your record? We spoke about it in the poll, uh, but I mean, do you think any of them are going to try and go for well, it? I mean, it, it's for sure it's going to go at some point. Mm. And I think the girls are getting closer and closer yeah. um, and believing that they can do it more and more and mm. also learning with each race. Um, and I think uh, that Mary in particular maybe learned some lessons last year. Yeah. Um, I think that Vivian definitely learns very quickly with each race and was very very smart in the way that she she ran last year so i think she's getting stronger all the time as well and it's that conundrum isn't it when you've got so many such a stacked field and so many good women they either are going to really race each other and produce really fast times or they're going to spend a lot of time watching each other and concentrating on winning the race yeah. uh, and i thought that was interesting in the press conference they were asked well is it more important to win or is it more important to run a fast time mm. and Mary said more important to win, and Vivian said win in a fast time. Oh, I like that. Well, you <laughs> just mentioned the press conference. We actually caught up with the guys at the press conference right here. Have a look at this. First of all, I want to take this uh, golden opportunity to thank the all race organizers of uh, London Marathon uh, for inviting me again this year. Because um, coming here for seven years uh, is not... Uh, uh, something is I'm not taking for granted. I want to say I'm very much happy for coming here to London. So, and I want to say that I'm very ready uh, to try to do my best on Sunday. Uh, you know, have uh, trained well and I'm uh, focused and very ready. Uh, for me, I know the rest of the ladies, uh, Bridget and, uh, and Gladys, Lynn and Masai, and the ladies from Ethiopia, all of, all of us are strong. But uh, for me, personally, I normally say that uh, I'm running as Vivian. I'm running my own race because I don't know how, how Bridget, she trains. I don't know how Mary or, 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 or Gladys, Gladys. So on Sunday, I'm running as Vivian. I'm running according to my, my shape. So there you have it, the women's press conference right there. Good time to get some mind games in, isn't there? You know, we, we speak about it with boxing. I spoke to Mo and, and Kipchoge about it, but it's a good time to really assess and suss the competition. It is, but there's enough time in the race to do that. And I think True. that's what's, um, what's also kind of a little bit unique about the marathon is yeah. you don't really need to spend a lot of time psyching your rivals out and mm. it's quite hard to, to really get a gauge of how fit you are but you get going those first couple of miles and you start to get some answers and you start to be able to to look around it and gauge and really see yeah. what shape people are in and you, then there are a few mind games like 
taking your bottle, oh, I'm really easy, you can offer that bottle around a little bit. Um, mm. There are definitely some mind games that come into play, yeah. but I think a lot of it is actually just more gauging and making mm. you move. It's, it's, it's like a big game of, of chess, really, I guess, as mm. well. But you've got to play the game right against yourself as much as against your rivals. That's the thing about the marathon. You, if you don't listen to your own body and the warning signs and how much y you have mm. to play with, then you, and you don't get that right, then there's no point in really getting it right for the other people. I like that. You're so wise, the way, the way you're putting <laughs> these things eloquently. Um, so we spoke earlier about how inclusive the race is. And um, we've seen on the long run some amazing people. You know, David Weir, of course, there's a lot of people that do in wheelchairs. There's people that do in costumes for charities. We had Paul, a guy that's blind. He's done 344 marathons, or this, I think this is going to be his 344th marathon. But we also have someone special as well. We had a woman called Eileen Noble. She's the oldest woman. She's going to be running. She's 84 years old as of today. Have a look at this. My name is Eileen Noble and I'm 83, four months, and um, I'm running the London Marathon to raise some money for hospice. This will be my 18th marathon. Spread over the last 30 years. I ran it when I was 80, three years ago, and I did at the time think that would be the last time, and then after a bit I just suddenly thought, well, perhaps I could manage another one. <laughs> I enjoy running because it just makes you forget everything else. When you're running, it takes your mind off all your other problems, um, gives you a chance to, to spend time out in the fresh air. Um, the exercise is really good as well, especially at my age when you need a bit of exercise. Um, and you meet nice people. It's a great social life as well. I belong to a club and we meet up socially as well as running together. Well, my mum's a huge inspiration. Um, I've been waiting for this day for a very long time for her to be the oldest female runner in the London Marathon. And I've been looking forward to it and going on about it for some years. She's the reason I run. And, and why I sort of am really evangelical about running and sort of try and get everybody else to run and um, have no worries about going out. So she, she is very inspirational to me, yeah. Well, it's a challenge, but it's an achievable challenge. It's not like trying to do something that's virtually impossible. You know, it's something that everyone can do if they just put their mind to it. So I always feel it's an achievable challenge, but you can feel that you've done something quite special when you've finished. <laughs> so there you have it, Eileen, 84 years of age. I mean, Paula, it, it just shows there's really no excuses, is there? Anyone can do it. No, there are no excuses, but that is, I mean, Eileen is hugely inspirational. She um, is. And I think, yeah, that is what, what's great about the sport. We're going to have really young competitors, competitors just turning 18 or right before the race. Mm. Uh, and, and then Eileen out there, and you've got that huge range in between. It, it's special. Yeah. Well, do you think you'll still be running when you're 84? I'd love to be. I'd love just to just be. Out there, <laughs> continuous. You see, obviously, you're still doing it now. Yeah, I am. No, I've got a little bit of time to, to yeah. keep going for. Um, but I hope so, yes. Um, whether it's racing marathons or running marathons or whether it's just being able to get out and run. But it is a part of my day that I'm really grateful to be able to have and yeah. use it for different things each day depending on really what I want to get from it whether it's a bit of a, a meditative run or whether yeah. it's just run hard or whether it's a celebration or a thinking time yeah. or I just need to clear my head and just get some me time. Yeah. Alright so we had some good luck messages from the people supporting everyone that's running. Let's have a look at this. We just want to wish good luck to all of our BHF champions in the London Marathon from all of us at the British Heart Foundation. You're going to smash it. Good luck, good luck everyone. everyone. See you tomorrow. Good luck to all of our runners on Sunday for the NSPCC. We've got over 500 running. I'm so excited. I'll see you all at the marathon tomorrow. Woo! Good luck, Team Mencap. Woo! See you tomorrow. Thanks to all the Cancer Research UK runners, all 850 of you raising an amazing amount of money. Good luck to everyone running tomorrow from all of us at registration. Just to wish everybody that's running the marathon good luck and those of you doing the first time marathon, just enjoy and don't worry. Dementia Revolution, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> 
We're from Scarborough Athletic Club and we can't wait to run London tomorrow. Yay! Yay! I'll see you tomorrow, I'm so excited. Good luck to everyone on Sunday. Have a great race. Enjoy the day. It's the best marathon in the world. So there you have it. I mean, so many good messages from the running community. How important is it that, you know, you get those kind of messages of goodwill. Do they, do they go a long way? I think they do go a long way, and it's, it's the, the warmth that comes with it as well, and I think mm. that's what builds and builds through that expo um, week when people are going to collect their numbers, and it really becomes real then. You've got your number, yeah. races come in, you see the excitement on the faces of other people around you, and you know that that's all going to just keep building and building until race day. Uh, and people have to get out to Blackheath so early and kind of hanging around, but you see so many other people there, and it's, it, it is growing. It's like, it's like getting ready for a big party, and it's just <laughs> building, building, building. And then the, the gun goes off, and then the carnival party just kind of moves along the streets. Yeah, it's insane. There's the whole road's closed off. So many people just, you know, lining it all up. Um, I want to ask you as well, you've been to the running show, right? What, yes, what do you think yeah. of the running show? I think it's great. Mm. Again, another celebration, kind of bringing runners together um, yeah. and helping to kind of give reasons to run, um, mm. identify targets, and also just give some information, just yeah. kind of like best type of shoes, orthotics, gels, the amount of questions that people never think they would have until mm. they start running, and then it's suddenly all these questions pop up. So having somewhere where you can go and get the answers to those is great. It is, it is important to have a hub. All right, let's get some questions from the viewers. We've, we've spoke a lot, we've seen a lot of clips. It's only right we let you guys have your voice as well. So the first question, Paula, comes from Mandy. Um, and they've said, "What is your longest run before a marathon, and how long before you uh, how long before do you do it?" So my longest runs were done to time rather than distance, because um, okay. I would be away at altitude, so it'd be probably a little bit less in distance for the time than it would have been at, at sea level. But I was working harder, okay. um, and I used to build up to try and do at least four, if not five two hour 15 runs so I would kind of start my build up maybe 145 mm. build it up 150 155 two hours two hours five to ten two fifteen and then try and like hold it there for a couple and then it starts really coming back down wow. again three weeks before um, so I guess it probably would have been because I used to do a mile warm up and warm down as well so I must have been getting up to around 24 miles but I never went the full 26 miles in training okay yeah so there you have it guys interesting very very interesting leanne has said uh, how many marathons have you done in total oh gosh i have to add them up um i don't know i think it might Off be 11 or 12 ballpark. something like that 11 or 12 11 okay. or 12 something like that that's a lot that's I'm a guessing. lot heidi has said uh how did you battle with the pre-race nerves so we spoke about this a bit earlier but just for heidi who wants to know um, just find some way to control them, accept that some nerves are good um, yeah. and just don't let them go too far. So you have your own little technique, escape technique almost, mm. to, to when the nerves feel like they're getting too much for you. Whether it's a nap, watch a movie, read a book, listen to some music. Even. Yeah, if that can help it. too. <laughs> if you're into it. Uh, Amy said, uh, which is your favourite marathon? <sighs> London. It's got to be London. <laughs> I mean, New York is a special one too. Yeah. Um, my first, uh, well, my world championships victory in Helsinki was really special too. Mm. But I think London because it's the one that I've grown up watching, and mm. even just the theme music yeah. just makes the hairs on my arms stand up, and yeah, I get excited. Um, so to be able to to come and run in it after I'd grown up, made that first step watching my dad in 1985 and been inspired to want to run by seeing Ingrid Christensen run by that day. Yeah. Um, all of that I think comes together and then the support that I got on the streets was amazing. Incredible you still get the support today. Adam has said did you ever have any superstitions before running a marathon? Oh loads. <laughs> I had my own routine. I actually had, when I was a kid, I used to have, so not before a marathon, but I used to have lucky underwear that I had to wear, okay. lucky socks, same kit for the, so I, if I raced in um, the new kit at the beginning of the year and it went well, I would keep that same kit with the rest of the year. Oh, wow. So okay. even though they, I would get lots of, lots of different outfits, I would just wear the same one, just keep washing it, washing it if I was racing. Well, so you're highly it. superstitious then? Uh, well, I think it's more routine okay, and things yeah. like Rituals, that. Things like almost. the same pins to pin my number on. Okay. But that meant that I always knew where they were and I d never didn't have pins. Yeah. Uh, the same jewellery to race in. It's just one less thing to think about on racing day. Because I just you organised That's as what well, I've got on. Exactly. Love that. All right, we're going to come to some more questions in a bit. First of all, uh, we want to show you a little clip of the start. So this is the start of the race being built. Have a look at this.
So there you have it, the start line being built, the iconic place where the race begins, essentially. Um, and we always speak about the runners, you know, the people that are actually taking part, the charities. But there's a lot of important people that actually put this together, isn't there? Behind oh, yeah. the scenes that do all the logistics. A lot. I mean, from that very first dream, if, if you like, uh, with, with Chris Frazier and mm. Sir John Disley, having that idea, that goal, and I've since had the luxury of being able to, to learn a little bit about how they did it. And I think it's so interesting the way it was planned to kind of go around the, the Greenwich Mean Time line. I think a lot of yeah. runners maybe don't understand that. Um, and if they saw what they built today, mm. I mean, it's just grown and grown and grown. grown. Uh, and now it takes a whole army to, to put it together. Yeah. So many people working so hard, so many volunteers yep. doing such an amazing job. And without them mm. we wouldn't have this marathon so yeah. i think a big thank you to all of all of the people who work so hard every year and especially to those volunteers yeah i'm going to echo that the volunteers is that's massive that people are giving up their time for free to go yeah. and just you know help a good cause so major props to you guys a few more questions uh al has said uh will you run the london marathon again Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to, yeah. You're going to do it, yeah, at some point. <laughs> I don't know when. I have to have a few words with the BBC because I'm going to be commentating yeah. as well. Um, but no, I mean, I, I would love to, yeah. At some point. Uh, Mark says, looking back on your career, what was your favourite track or road? Um, my favourite track or road? Well, mm. I think we said, we said the road already would be the, the London Marathon. Yeah. Um, Track-wise, oh, I loved racing in the real distance cults so mm. so Zurich Oslo okay. Monaco as well um, I ran my 3000 meter PB there and it's my nice kind of home Monaco. track now right. um, but it's a very fast track and I loved racing there that's amazing all right Tracy said uh, what do you think of to keep running at such a fast pace when racing you've really got to be in the zone and, and kind of hold that concentration without over stressing um, mm. so it, it's kind of like training your mind in the long run as much as you're training your body so when you do those long runs in training making sure that you're also training your mind to stay focused to keep checking in on the little things uh, make sure that everything's okay focusing on the next drink station making yep. sure that you're remembering to do that that you're kind of open to what's going on around you mm. for dangers running out onto the course but also what your rivals are doing there are loads of things to think about there's so many things going through your mind i can imagine uh, gillian says what would you eat the night before a marathon Something plain uh, and, and simple uh, right. that I've eaten before uh, with some fair amount of carbohydrates. Yeah, fairly light. Nothing milk? rich. Do you want to give them a meal? Um, I used to have quite a, a lot of like salmon or chicken uh, okay. with the rice. Yeah. A um, little bit of steamed veg, but not too many veg. Sounds like a real athlete's diet. <laughs> Definitely. Me, I'll just be eating sweets, but that's why I'm not running. <laughs> uh, Alison said, uh, what's your best running memory? Many. It is, it's really hard to, to pick because people always say oh, it's going to be the world record and of course that is a really really special yeah. running memory but like I said when I ran in 2015 I think that was an amazing uh, memory that will always stay with me and I, yeah. I was really tired towards the end but I never wanted it to end. I wanted oh. just to be able to, to keep running that. Um, Running, winning the World Cross Country uh, mm. when I was a junior and then finally winning it as a senior because I'd yeah. set the goal to try and win it. It took me nine years to do it. So oh, wow. that was really, really special to, yeah. to win that. So many highlights, so many highlights. All right, so before we head out, I just want to ask you, Paula, what's your last bit of advice for the runners? Because today, tomorrow, sorry, is the big day. So go out and have fun, really enjoy it. Draw on that energy um, and s make some really special memories. And just remember that there will be ups and downs, but you've got through those rough patches in training, so you'll definitely be able to do it in the race. Love that. And if you could sum up the London Marathon, the Virgin Money London Marathon, in just one word, no more than one word, what would it be? Alive. I like, ooh, I like that. that one okay, there you have it. So guys, that's it. We have come to the end of the show. Now, before we head out, I just want to give you the result of the poll, okay? So obviously, at the, <laughs> at the top of the show, we gave you a poll. Will it be broken? Paula Radcliffe's record, what do you think they said? Oh, I don't 81% know. people said... 81, that's high one way. No, it won't be broken. Oh. So look at it, they're going to... Fingers crossed. Love that. <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't count for that. that. <laughs> See, they're going to back you no matter what. So there you have it. That's the result of the poll. We have come to the end of the show. Thank you, everyone that has tuned in to all of the long runs. We've had some amazing guests. Paula Radcliffe, Somo Farrell, David Weir, Charlotte Perdue, and tomorrow is the big day. So we're going to be there early, Brian early, from the start line, 
We're going to be giving you all of the coverage. Make sure you don't miss it, okay? The final day, the big day. And um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Good luck.